Kwame Brown, Brian Scalbrini, Jarvis Crinton, and Sun Yu are all considered some of the worst NBA players in league history. But what if I told you a story of how good bad NBA players are? Lakers don't have the numbers. It's all even. Well, trailer. Right hand gets it and goes to the line. Out of Kwame's hands. <laughs> he catches it cleanly, but he doesn't really palm the ball. What's good YouTube, it's your boy James here, hope it's all good for you, cause it's all good for me. So a couple months ago, I was on Quora, which is a very affordable site by the way, and someone asked a question, how good are bad NBA players? There are a lot of great answers, but the one I'll read to you today was the best in my opinion. Gary Murphy, who coached youth basketball for three years and is a lifelong NBA fan, answered the question back in March of 2018, which is obviously this year. Just by his first paragraph alone should give you a preview of how good the story would be. He answered, extremely good. I mean, like, amazing. So without wasting any more time, here was the story. At our local LA Fitness, we are at a whole gym for a few NBA players during the offseason. Amar Starmer came in a couple times and Mike Bibby was a semi-regular. But let's talk about this. Miguel Knight, unless you live in the Phoenix during the Tom Chambers, Kevin Johnson, Dan Marley era, you have no clue who I'm talking about, which makes sense, because in NBA terms, he wasn't that good. He bounced around the league a bit, but was never anything more than a backup point guard who played about 8 minutes a game. At our local gym for our former college basketball players, Miguel would run circles around everyone. At 6'1", he would easily out-rebound the 6'6 six guys. He made the small quick guards look stupid and slow. He shot from several feet outside the three-point line like Curry. And you know what? He wasn't even trying. I once saw him coming with a big bag of McDonald's, devour a Big Mac, a filet of fish a large fries, and a big-ass Coke that go out and humiliate people. You want to know how good the worst enemy player is? Go into the stadium early and watch warms. Watch the center who hasn't played a minute all season long at the three-point line and can shoot shot after shot after shot. Watch the 6 foot one guard jump so high, high enough so his head clears the rim. Watch how Eversley they make jump shot after jump shot after jump shot. Sometimes I'll talk to the person next to them without even looking at the rim. These guys are insanely good. So as you can see in the screen right here, the story got over 46,000 views and almost 4,000 upvotes on Quora. Upvotes are like likes, basically. And I don't know if this video could get like 40,000 views. I may be tripping, but I don't know. It may be too much to ask, but that's besides the point. So to me, this story was very memorable because, you know, every time we play with our friends, they say, oh, I can be Kwame Brown. I can be Brian Scott I can be all these players. But then you don't realize from the Nigel Knight story that these NBA players are legit. They can beat you eating McDonald's in your face. They can beat you blindfolded. They can beat you in their sleep. And so it was a really good story to read to y'all. I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as well. I'll definitely give y'all the link to the story below. And that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for more notifications. And I make videos every Thursday now for basketball. And it was your boy James. Hope it's all good for you. Cause it's all good for me. I'm out, guys. The Red JP. Hey, listen. Look at my wrist. Hey, yeah. I don't know what it is. Hold on, hold on. They heard you, man. Say that again. Savage. Bitch, bitch. Look at my wrist. Oh, yeah. I don't know what it is. Fuck it up, bitch. I don't kiss. Tell me I don't miss. Nah, honey, for my fuck.